So you've seen my previous video on the unboxing of the Hyper 212 Vivo and you just saw the basic things that come in, accessories and I have it right now installed and I just wanted to show you the difference between that massive cooler and this. Quite a big difference in heat sink size and also, which is more importantly, big difference in temperature readings right now. On my left I see the temperatures of the AM3 stock cooler. When I had that I did a print screen after I've um, after I've been playing Battlefield 4 for an hour straight with loads of things in the background so to really stress it out with a stock cooler. And re remember I actually had this on turbo uh, mode in the BIOS. I put the fans on turbo so it was actually quite loud and it was really annoying and it was still quite hot. And yeah, that thing was bloody hot. So then I just went out and bought um, not only the Hyper 212, but I also bought uh, Arctic Silver 5. So I didn't use this, the thermal paste that come with the, the with that um, with this cooler. I got um, a, I bought I bought a thermal paste separately. So yeah, and as you can see, th those are the temperatures when I had the stock cooler. So CPU, 61 degrees maximum, and that's when I was like really pushing, and this was like a, an hour long. Uh, and I didn't like that, because the thermal threshold of the CPU, of the AMD FX 6300, is 65 degrees Celsius. So it's just, it is going quite close. And it, if you, although it says 65 degrees, it, um, although it says 65 degrees thermal threshold, it doesn't mean that it's going to just die as soon as it reaches that. It just means that it's going to severely degrade the life of the component. So... That's the thing I didn't want to do because I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not able to spend like so much money on Titan Xs and GTX 980s. So I, I want to keep an eye on my uh, components. I don't want to lose any of them. And okay, so and also take notice that the fan speeds that I had on my stock were very high. Look at that, wait, three thousand. Wait, you can't see that. Well, it says three thousand five hundred and ninety RPM. Imagine that, 3590 RPM with this tiny, like, looks like an 80mm, probably smaller fan. This was loud as hell, like, it would be crazy loud. And, ever since I put the new cooler, I haven't heard a thing from the cooler right now. And now, the cool this fan is 120mm and it makes no noise. And here you go, the temperatures that I got now. So, the temperatures that I get right after I had the had the Hyper 212 Evo installed. So you can see the highs I've ever seen is 45 meg, uh, megahertz, 45 degrees Celsius. Although I did this, I did a test yesterday and it did reach 46, but that was because the ambient room temperature was higher, slightly higher because it was quite sunny outside yesterday and it was really warm yesterday, so it would have been slightly higher. So it was 46 I've ever seen it go. And the idle, uh, not idle, on the minimum when I just started up and I launched this thing as quick as possible was 22 degrees compared to this one it would instantly just sh as soon as I turned on the computer it would shoot up to 35 degrees so this one this cooler has made quite a big difference the cooler and the thermal page and as you can see this is right now uh, this is 29 degrees celsius that's crazy right now just doing nothing just the computer not doing anything, it gets 29, and when I'm like on, you know, on the Chrome and just swapping the YouTube and going on the tabs and stuff like that, or talking to people on Skype, I'll get around 31, 32 degrees, so it just jumps about there, but that's about it. So it's really, really keeping it cool. And no again, notice how the temperatures, no, not the temperatures, the RPM speeds has never exceeded 1,200 RPM. That's, that's really impressive. That's really impressive indeed. Actually, I've actually found something really strange as well. Um, if I go to clock speed, yeah, the clocks, uh, it says the cores, the maximum uh, frequency that the cores reach is 4.4 gigahertz. But that's very strange because this CPU has a base clock of 3.5 gigahertz and it turbos when needed to 4.1. I don't know why it's gone to 4.4. I don't know if it's just like that, but. It says it turbos to 4.1 gigahertz. I don't know if there's something bug with this. Uh, I don't know if it's just a bug with the program, but it says 4.4. But the turbo, the highest it can, it was designed to go was 41, uh, 4.1. So that's quite, 
strange. I don't know if it, I don't know if it's either a bug on the program or maybe it's gotten so cool. This cooler has kept kept it so cool that the CPU can instantly just decide. Oh, it's so cool. It's you know the CPU is super nice and cool and it's stable temperatures. I can reach an even higher frame um, frequency. So yeah, that's quite it. That's about it. So yeah, I would definitely recommend getting that cooler over your AMD or even if you have an Intel CPU, uh, like an i3. Um, I'd recommend getting the cooler for that as well. Actually, no, you don't get the. I wouldn't get a cooler. I wouldn't get a cooler like that on an Intel CPU if you don't overclock it because Intel CPUs don't use much power, therefore less heat output, and their lithograph, their nanometer progress, the nanometer progr process is very small, so it doesn't really generate much heat. So, yeah, for Intel, I would just keep on to your stock cooler because I have stock cooler in my old machine there, it's got an Intel Pentium and it keeps itself quite cool with the Intel stock speed and I'm putting, I put the Intel stock okay well, why am I talking about this, this has got nothing to do with it yeah, so if you have an AMD fan an AMD CPU and they tend to be very small and super damn noisy and hot I would recommend getting that cooler because it's super cheap and it does the job really really well thanks for watching an episode of uh, Pilo Follow us, text reviews, and I'll see you guys next time.